Okay, for our starter guide build for fighter, what you want to use is something like Lazelle. Lazelle's already set up to be a fighter, so she's a great option. Um, you could use, you know, Carlac or whoever you wanted to, whichever character fits how you want to run a fire, a fighter. Um, and then for your fighting style, you're going to want to either choose great weapon fighting if you're using a big sword or axe or something. Uh, if you want a little extra protection, you can go defense. That'll add plus one to your armor class. Protection's really tough to use. That's a fighter that's using a shield and they'd have to stand next to someone. If you have a small sword or like a long sword and a, a, a shield, what you're going to want to use is dueling. Dueling just adds two to every time you attack. It works really well with fighter. It just keeps that consistent damage. Um, and then if you would like a fighter that's dual wielding, you could do two weapon fire. But what I really recommend is just go ahead and go with great weapon fighting. Or if you're using a the old sword and board, sword and a shield, and then go with dueling. Then we're going to look at our stats. I'm going to go ahead and clear them here because they're kind of weird. So for a fighter, your most important thing is going to be your strength. And we're going to try to want to try to get that as high as we possibly can. The reason being is that all of our weapon attacks are based off of strength. So if we have a 10 strength, we have plus zero to a hit with our swords. If we have a 12, it goes up to plus one, 14 plus two, 16 plus three. We're gonna put it at 17, which is the same as 16, but we're gonna we're gonna increase the strength to 20 eventually. For your dexterity, it's also somewhat important. It helps you with your armor class. If you feel like your care, you want your fighter to wear some medium armor, you probably want to get your dexterity up to 14. But if he's gonna be wearing heavy armor, then you don't have to really worry about dexterity. Constitution is probably our next most important stat, because that determines how much hit points you have. I like to throw about 14 points into Constitution because these stats, although they are the mental stats, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, are still very important for me to be able to increase my saving throws as I'm fighting. So, for example, if someone wants to stop me from being able to move and they use hold person on me, it's going to be a wisdom saving throw. So minus one is, is really tough to deal with. So what I'm actually going to do is put my bonus into wisdom here. And we're going to do something like this. I think wisdom's probably the most important. Actually, we're going to do 12 into intelligence next and then 10 charisma. And wisdom saving throws are pretty common, especially for whole person and those type of abilities or anything that charms your character. It's normally a wisdom saving throw. And then if you're fighting mind players, those are normally intelligence saving throws. So I would probably do that next uh, as your next highest ability. And then, like I said, dexterity is not as important because dexterity saving throws are normally just for damage. You have a really big hit pull, you'll be able to heal yourself a little bit. You'll be fine from there. For your skills, I normally choose either athletics or acrobatics. Since I already have athletics, I'm going to keep that one there. That's fine. I don't need a point in acrobatics. When someone tries to push you or throw you, you'll use either an athletics or an acrobatics check. Whichever one's higher to try to not be thrown or pushed. So you normally want to have one of those at a decent scale, especially for a fighter that's going to be in melee range. I already have a point in perception. I think that's kind of a cool little thing. And Lazel's already proficient with intimidation. You see the little thing that's from their background. So we get to pick a second one. I'm going to go ahead and choose. Let's go ahead and choose survival. And that way I can see if I can find some stuff on the ground, that type of stuff. So confirm, and we'll go into leveling now. So fighter is a pretty simple build, but you get a lot of options as you go through. As we hit level two, you'll notice we hit, we get action surge. Action surge gives you an extra action to use immediately. This means that if you use action surge, you're gonna get every extra attack that you get. And we'll go over extra attacks in a bit. So. Level two, you're going to be able to attack, use your action surge for free, and then do another attack. Let's continue on. At level three, we're going to get our subclass. You also get a little race bonus, our subclass. So these are the three subclasses for a fighter. If you want a very simple, that you don't have to think about build, you can go ahead and go champion. 
Champion makes you crit more often, so it adds 5% chance to crit, which is really cool. And it's going to give you a bunch of bonuses that help with just generalized fighting. You're going to get a few more. You're going to get an additional fighting style at some point in time. You're going to be able to, I believe you get like a bonus to jumping and athletics. Um... It basically allows for just a, a better fighting style or a better fighter in general. So you also get a better jump. That's what it is. Sorry. And then you double your proficiency to anything that's strength or dex or add half of it, I believe. Um, but it's not super, it's not super in depth. There's not a lot of skill cap to it. Again, you're just going to walk up and fight. The Eldritch Knight is a little more complicated. It's probably the most complicated of the ones. You're going to get spells that you can use. Um, but if you're swinging a big axe, a lot of times you don't want to be casting spells. The spell takes up your whole action. Well, that means you don't get to attack at all. Eldritch Knight is cool and thematic, and there's some builds that are very interesting with it. And you also do get weapon bond, which is kind of neat. So if you do go this route, what I'd recommend is taking shield, uh, spells like shields or protection from good and evil, things that you're concentrating on, but you're not really doing... Uh, during the fight or like shield like I said is a reaction so that's a cool little ability um, or like long strider here is really neat because uh, it increases your movement or expeditious retreat you can concentrate on that until a long, basically until a long rest and at all times you can always dash as a bonus action which is really cool so it allows you to just get in the fight really well my personal favorite is battle master it gives you these pull of dice and it's a, it's a little more complicated, but you're going to get these things called superiority dice. You get four of them. They're, they're a D8. The way that these work is the, they come back on a short rest, and then you're also going to gain three maneuvers that are going to use those dice. So, for example, you could direct an ally to strike an enemy. So you could use one of your dice to have an ally strike an enemy. Now this one's not as good because it doesn't really say it here, but it's gonna use up your entire action. So I don't like it as much. The ones that I really like is something like disarming attack. So you spend a superiority dice, you deal an additional 1d8 damage. That's the superiority dice. So that goes up later on in the, the levels. And then they have to make a saving throw. And that saving throw is based on, I believe it's your strength. If they fail the saving throw, they drop their weapon, so now they're doing less damage in combat, which is really cool. I also really like this one, Distracting Strike. It basically distracts them a little bit, and now your allies get advantage on attacks. You could use Evasive Footwork, so it basically expends a dice to impose disadvantage on all enemies for a turn. The reason I don't like this one, though, is if you're the fighter, you're supposed to be the one that's kind of taking the hits. So if you use this, then the enemies might not want to hit you. The opposite of that, we're going to skip feigning attack, but the opposite of that is goading attack. You deal an additional 1d8, and you attempt to basically goad the target into attacking you, so they get disadvantage on everybody else. So I really like this one. It kind of helps force enemies to attack you, especially that one big guy that's doing a bunch of damage. This army is another good one as well. Um... The other two that I want to show is Menacing Attack. Menacing Attack is the same as the other ones. You're going to add a 1d8 damage, but it attempts to frighten them. Now, Frighten in this game makes it to where they cannot move. They have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, which is really cool. So disadvantage on ability checks only, not saving throws. So spells are still going to be the same against them. But if you go to push an enemy that's frightened, it's more likely that you succeed, which is really cool. So you could, if somebody's near an edge, you could frighten them with a menacing attack and then push them off of a cliff, right? Precision attack is really important as well. You can use a superiority of dice and add it to the attack roll. Now you could use a precision attack on something like a menacing attack. So that way you could guarantee that it hits. One thing that's really cool about your superiority dice is they don't use a D8 if you miss the attack. So you don't have to really feel like you have, you're required to hit it. Um, pushing attack will push someone back a bit. Works really well if they're near an edge. Rally just uses one of your dice to give an ally eight temporary hit points. It only lasts for five turns, but it's kind of cool. 
Repost is one of my absolute favorites. When someone misses me with an attack, I then get to retaliate and hit them and deal extra damage. So I normally take this one, it's pretty solid. Sweeping attack lets you hit multiple enemies, another really cool ability, and then finally trip attack knocks people prone. So the ones that I really like are trip attack, repost, and then either goading attack to force someone to attack me, or disarming attack. Finally, menacing attack is another one that I really, really like. So we have trip attack and we have disarming attack. So basically we can knock people's weapons out of their hands, we can trip them, and then on top of that, we can attack back when we are missed. So getting into level four, we're gonna have a feat. Now feats look a little daunting at times. Most of the time you wanna just increase your strength and go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and start by increasing our strength, okay? As we continue through level five is where you get your extra attack. So now when you use your action surge, you're gonna be able to make two attacks again. So you make your two attacks, use your action surge, make another two attacks. That's four attacks on a turn, really solid. When we hit level six, we get an additional feat. Well, our strength is already 19, so if we do this, where do we put our other point at? You could put it into something like constitution or any of the other things to make a better save, or you could look at some of the other options. If you do something cool like this, like athlete, you could put one point into strength and whenever you're knocked prone, you can stand up a lot easier and your jump distance is also a little further. I really recommend athlete to a newer player. It allows for you to be able to get pretty far in uh, combat. Jumps are hilariously, like you jump so far, it's kind of hilarious. Another really good option is great weapon master. Whenever you land a critical hit with a melee attack, you can make another one as a bonus action. So that one's really cool. Um, if you want to be tankier, you could also take Heavy Armor Master. Where's that? There it is. Heavy Armor Master. So this could also increase your strength by one. So now you're at 20. And then it reduces incoming damage from non-magical attacks by three. Now that stacks with Heavy Armor too. So some of the better heavy armor in the game will reduce the damage you take by three. So these will stack and you basically, every time you get hit, you take six less damage, which is really, really strong. So we'll go ahead and do this one um, for now. Another cool, other options you could do is Great Weapon Master. Again, like I said, it's, it's gonna add extra damage, but it's gonna make you hit less often. Sometimes it's worth, sometimes it's not. It kind of takes a little bit of time playing the game to really understand whether it's good or not. Um, Sentinel's not the best feat for a newer player because how it interacts is kind of tough. Uh, you could always do the Polar Master Sentinel, which is what this character was originally set up as. That's why it's got the giant halberd. Um, but we're not going to go over that in this video. So we're just going to choose Heavy Armor Master and continue on from there. Okay, we hit level seven fighter. This is where we get two more maneuvers. So I'm gonna grab two of the ones that I really liked earlier. We're gonna grab goading and menacing. Okay, and when we hit level eight, we now get a additional feat. Um, and I think my idea here to, is to build a character that you can just put in, play and do quite a bit of stuff with it. I'm gonna do mobile. So your movement speed increases slightly and difficult terrain doesn't slow you down when you dash. Um, it just makes you a little faster and able to get to the enemies a little better. If you don't like this, you could also go Savage Attacker, especially if you're using like a Great Axe, it'll roll it a little better. Or again, like I said, Great Weapon Master. But we're just gonna grab Mobile for now. Uh, level nine you're going to get indomitable. So we're talking about those saving throws that stop you from doing anything. This gives you a chance to succeed again. So or basically, if you fail on your first saving throw, you can use this feature. And it's only, I believe it's once per long rest. It doesn't say here. But you can reroll the dice and possibly succeed when you're being held in place. 
All right, and then at fire level 10, this is what we're talking about, improved superiority dice. So now you add a D10 instead of a D8 to those damage. And we're gonna pick up two more maneuvers. It seems like a lot, but you'll kind of figure out which ones are good and which ones you like doing um, as you're kind of going through it. We're just gonna pick up some stuff that we're gonna use as not, basically not as part of our attack. So I'm gonna pick up evasive footwork here um, and precision attack to help me hit. Let's say there's a guy that's really tough. I wanna to make sure I hit. Actually, you know what? We're not gonna take precision because we didn't take great weapon master. We're instead gonna take sweeping attack. That way I can attack on an arc. Our 11th level of fighter is gonna give us an, another extra attack. So this does not, none of the extra attacks stack together in this game with one exception. That has to do with Warlock, but it doesn't work in higher difficulties. So, improved extra attack means we make three attacks per turn, and then on top of that, we're able to action surge once per short rest and do another three attacks. Finally, at level 12, we can get another feat if we'd like, but I've kind of got all the feats I want. You can take this time, if you're not on easy difficulty, to add a different class. So maybe you wanted to add Warlock, or cleric or rogue or anything like that that um just to get some spells like druid i'm gonna actually add warlock here now the reason being uh i want to go ahead and grab some ranged attacks it's nothing amazing and we'll grab mage hand sure for my subclass it's really not gonna matter i'm gonna take the great old one though because we only have one level in warlock and what this will do is whenever I land a crit, there's a chance that they become scared and enemies around that become scared. We are going to get two first level spells. Honestly, the only reason I'm here is I want Hex. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Hex and we'll grab Armor Agathis as well, just in case. It's just a little extra temp HP, doesn't really do much. And that's it. That's our complete level. Okay, so jumping into gear and what type of gear you should do. So for your helmet, really look for anything that's giving you a bonus to your hit, bonus to critical saving throw, anything like that. So right now she's got, or not critical saving throw, excuse me, critical hit. So I currently have this helmet on. It gives me a plus one bonus to crit. Um, but something like this right here, plus one to, or plus two to attack rolls and initiative rolls is really nice. The Grimskull Helmet is really nice. They, enemies can't crit you, and on top of that, you get Hunter's Mark. Really, the whole reason I took the level in Warlock is so I could get basically a Hunter's Mark. It's Hex. Um, for cloaks, wear whatever you can. Any any cloaks can help you out just slightly. They're not a huge difference. They don't do a ton. For your, uh, for your chest plate, we're going to go with Heavy Armor again because we do have that high strength and no dexterity. So if we have on, for example, a piece of medium armor. So this is armor class 16. Why is our armor class 15? Because it's adding our dexterity modifier to it. So it actually reduces our armor class. So we really want to wear heavy armor. That's why we wear Reaper's Embrace. It gives us an armor class of 19. I don't know why we have these gloves on. I apologize. I meant to put on... These gloves are there. So, these gloves right here. Targets have disadvantage on saving throws against your maneuver and weapon action. So that means these cool weapon attacks that we were talking about, and I'll show you them here in a minute, um, they all have disadvantage against them, which is really neat. So it just means that they're gonna be more successful. So disadvantage takes two dice, rolls them both, and then the enemy will have to choose the lower of the two dice as their save. For your boots, you probably want something like this that makes it where you can't fall. Um, something that helps you be mobile, so something with Misty Step, or there's, there's another pair that have Dimension Door, or even something to add to your armor class. Um, for your equipment and necks, I really just grab something like some basic stuff. You really can grab whatever you want. Um, there's a ring that you can get an act one, a two that adds plus two to every one of, every one of your attacks, which is really cool. And then because we're using a long sword, you really want something like this. So this is a plus one weapon enchantment. This is a, a sword that you can get on pretty early on in the game. And then because it's Lazelle, she's a gift. She also adds an extra 1d4 of psychic. 
She also gets a plus two to initiative rolls, which is really nice. Now, if you were running this as a sword and board type character, you'll notice the armor class goes up substantially because you have a shield to defend yourself. I just have a plus one shield here because it's a plus three to my armor class, which is really nice. And then I have this long sword that you get in early on in act one. You can look up where to find it. But what it does is it allows you to do two different variants. It takes an action, but what you can do is you can use Shriek and then every time an enemy gets hit while within melee range, they take an extra 1d4 hunter damage. So you could use this ability. It takes a whole action, but then you can action surge and then attack them three times. And because you're using a short, uh, a long sword, it would actually be 1d8 plus 6. It would then change to 1d8 plus 10, or plus 8, because you would add plus 2 if you switched from Great Weapon Master to this. And then you would actually add an extra d4 for every one of those hits, which is really cool. Also, if you use your bonus action to Hex, you can add in another 1d6 as well, too, which is really neat. So how do you use this build to fight? Gonna go ahead and show off one of my characters here. So this is another enemy. What you would do is if we were in, I'm gonna put it in turn-based mode so you can see exactly how it works. The first thing you'd want to do is hex. And when you press hex, a bunch of crap pops up. You want to just choose one of these. It honestly doesn't matter. I would always choose either dexterity or strength. So we're going to go ahead and click strength and we're going to hex our enemy. That means when we hit him, it does extra damage and we're going to walk up and attack. All right. So you see when we attacked, it did one D eight slashing plus one for the weapon and then plus five for our strength. So it's 11 damage total. And then it adds in that extra D six from hex. Now, if we were wielding a two-handed greatsword and we attack, it will instead do quite a bit more damage. It does the 2d6 slashing, psychic damage, and the necrotic. And if you notice, it's re-rolling all these different items here. So that way you end up with quite a bit of damage. So each one of these is doing, what, 21 damage a hit, even without great weapon master. So don't feel like you're required to take it. Let's see if we can hit it again. Bam. That was 23 damage for that one. Also, if you wanted to use your trip attack or your menacing attack, you see that it does quite a bit more damage. He did save against it, but it still did an extra 1d8 of damage. I think it's in here somewhere. Do a trip attack and see if it does it this way. There we go. So now you can see the extra 1d8 of damage. So it does 2d6 slashing plus our strength modifier and then plus 1d10, sorry, of slashing. And then it adds in our psychic and our necrotic. Again, it's rerolling a lot of that damage for us as well, which is really neat. Okay, so. I wanted to show off some of the combat here for the character. And you see we have a 19 AC. We're just running around with this Act 1 sword. We don't have anything in crazy as far as gear goes. Everything's pretty well accessible. And you see the enemies are missing quite a bit because of that high armor class value. And we are fighting quite a bit of enemies. So one of the things that you can do that's really cool at this point in time... Um, as we're going to go ahead and start with a strength hex on this thing. And then here's what I want to show you. We're going to disarm and attack. So all your uh, abilities are here in your fighter battle master. One thing I don't like about the way they set it up is they put them all randomly over there. I don't like how they set them up. So what I'm going to do is put all of my ranged options over here. So I know cool those are arranged. And you do that by just clicking the unlock button and then you can go ahead and lock it. 
Um, I have sweep attack over here as well because I really I will I will very rarely use sweep attack. Most of the time, I'll just use cleave from the actual weapon itself. So, um, so yeah, he is hexed now. So we could try to trip attack him, but if you right click examine, um, I believe he is immune to trip. Can't be surprised, but I think he's immune to being able to be knocked down. So what instead we're going to do is limit his damage output by trying to disarm him. And it still does pretty good damage. All right, so I apologize. The animation didn't show correctly, but it did succeed. He took zero psychic damage because they don't take psychic. He took 16 slashing, 2d6 plus the strength modifier plus the 1d10, and then another four necrotic. So now we got him disarmed. Um, we're going to just go ahead and hit him again a couple times. Now, what I recommend doing is almost always, if you have the ability to do a ton of damage right off the bat, go ahead and use your action search early on to basically do a pile of damage at the front to try to flip the tide of battle to your help. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm not going to do that one yet. I'm going to save that one for later. Uh, there we go, a nice little crit. And what I'm trying to do is get him... Doesn't look like I'm going to, but I was trying to get him low enough to... Uh, to drop his weapon. Now what I'm going to do here is, because it's just me, I'm going to backpedal a bit. Because these guys are going to have to dash to get to me. And she has been trying to shoot me. So what I, instead I'm going to do is I'm going to try to... I know this is contrary to what you would normally do, but I'm going to try to get down to here... Now at this point in time, I could use evasive footwork, but we're gonna save it for when I have everybody kind of surrounding me. So now the enemy tries to dash to get to me. It'll be a second, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward now. So you can see how many enemies wasted their turn by dashing. Now, for me, the biggest threat is still this guy, so I want to get rid of him. All right. Ooh, unlucky. So this point in time, I think it's very likely that I'm gonna be able to get hit. If I run away, he's not gonna get an attack of opportunity, but this guy will. Instead, we're gonna use one of our superiority dice to make it to where it's harder for me to get hit. So now for the next turn, everybody has disadvantage on attacks. All right, so it is back to our turn. You see that unfortunately we missed our attack. And now it's going to be hard to finish this guy off. We're going to go ahead and use our second wind here. It's really nice for topping us off. Um, and what I'm going to do... Ooh, that's a lot of attacks. All right, then. Let's go ahead and do this. And try to fight my way through these guys. We have now stunned that guy. We have two more attacks. Cool, and we have this guy knocked prone. I'm going to use the Lacerate. That's a specific weapon to the sword on this guy. Because it pretty much guarantees it hits. And then, even though I don't want to, we're just going to use our last evasive action here and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, so it is back to our turn, and we have barely survived. 
<laughs> what I'm going to do here is grab a couple of potions off of a character. Doesn't look like we have... Oh, there we are. Send to Lazel. So we're going to start by drinking one of these to make sure we hang in, all right? And then I'm going to use my first attack to throw a healing potion. So if you throw it at the ground at your own feet, it'll hit you. So now what we want to do at this point in time, we've done a decent amount of damage, but we really want to <clears throat> get rid of the guys that are low in health. So we're going to try to hit this guy. Cool. So now there is one less guy attacking us. I want to stay where I am again. I don't have my uh, battle master to make, make it harder to me or me to be hit this turn. See, this is another reason why you want to focus one target at a time, because you see she now healed this guy back up to full because I did hit him earlier. <clears throat> now if we would have done maybe a few more damage to that it would have exploded and put us in a better position if you enjoyed that video do me a big favor and press that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel it makes a huge difference and i really appreciate it we'll see you in the next one until then stay safe and roll more 20s how would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards Bless